last few weeks, I've been trying to think of something absolutely original and devastating. I've been trying to lay my hands on some idea that will revolutionise the world in some way. Something like fire or the wheel. Of course, it's no good thinking of those two because they've already been invented, but something along those lines. It's a very good thing to do, you know. I mean, look at the man who thought of fire. He could have made an absolute fortune. As soon as he thought of it, he should have patented it. And every time anybody lit a fire, they'd have had to pay him a royalty. <laughs> but being a rather primitive person, he didn't think of that. Same thing happened to the bloke who thought of the wheel. Actually, nobody really knows who was the first person to invent the wheel. It's all shrouded in mystery. Apparently, in primeval times, there were these two primitive people who were both working on inventions in their caves. They were called Drogbar and Gorbly, two extremely primitive people. Then one day, Drogbar came out with a great smile all over his hairy face, and he said, Guess what? I've just invented the Bandan Bladderstiddle. <laughs> it's absolutely brilliant. Brilliant. And so Gorbly came out and said, Hello, Drogbar. I hear you've invented the Bandan Bladderstiddle. Uh, <laughs> congratulations, sir. Uh, what exactly is it? And Drogbar said, It's a wonderful device that will revolutionise the world. It's very simple. It's just a round thing that's easy to push along, that's all. And then Gorbly went white and said in a strangled voice, it hasn't by any chance got spokes in it, has it? <laughs> yes, it has, as a matter of fact, said Drod, but how the devil did you know? And Gorbley said, that's not a bandan bladder stibble, you stupid idiot, that's a wheel. <laughs> it's a wheel, and I invented it first. How dare you steal my idea? And a great pipe blows out between them. And if the man who invented fire hadn't come along and threatened to set light to them both, they might have killed each other. <laughs> Anyway, there was a great dispute, and all the hairy old Neanderthals met together at Stonehenge, a lovely place, to decide who really thought of it first. And eventually, after days and days of argument, they came to the conclusion that although it seemed likely that Drodbar had thought of his bandan bladder still before Gorbley had thought of his wheel, nevertheless, they were going to give the credit to Gorbley, because he thought of a much better name for it. I think they're right, actually. I mean, think of going into a garage and asking them to put a bit more air into your bland and bad. <laughs> Still, you can't help feeling sorry for poor old Drodbar, you know. He went into a great depression and went round mumbling and moaning about his wretched old band and bladder stiddle. <laughs> Eventually, he was run down by the world's first pterodactyl drawn chariot. <laughs> Terrible end. I know lots of people who've thought of things just a little bit too late. Poor old Spotty Maldoon, he, uh, he thought of splitting the atom the other day. If only he could have had the idea about 30 years ago, he'd have made a bloody fortune. <laughs> I was talking to you about my plans to think of something absolutely new and revolutionary which would change the whole face of the world. Well, I just thought of it. It's called the Plib. It's an amazing thing, the plib. I thought of it in the bar. It's very simple and small and amazing. It's very peculiar that nobody thought of it before. It's about a quarter of an inch long and a quarter of an inch wide. And it's completely round and white. And what you do is drop it into a glass of water and it fizzes. <laughs> then you drink down the plibby substance and it cures you of anything. Isn't that wonderful? If you've got rheumatism in the knees, all you have to do is take one plib and within seconds all your troubles are over. <laughs> and the amazing thing is that it works for every kind of disease. It's a really wonderful invention, the plib. I went along to the patent office with it yesterday to register it in my name. I went in there and I said, excuse me, I've just invented the plib and I want to get it patented before anybody steals the idea. And they said, oh yes. What exactly is this plib of yours? So I explained to them what it was, and they were very interested and asked to see one. And so I had to tell them I hadn't exactly made one yet. <laughs> uh, it was still in the idea stage. What I wanted to do was to patent the idea first, and then do the research to get the plib into production. 
They said that wasn't possible unless I actually made a working clip. I've never heard such rubbish in my life. <laughs> it's the people who have the ideas who deserve all the credit. I mean, anyone could make a rotten old wooden wheel, but it takes brains to think of the idea of the wheel. I wonder what happened to poor old Einstein. He had that wonderful idea about splitting the atom and causing enormous explosions. I suppose he came along to the patient office with his diagrams and he said, Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Einstein, but I'm afraid you'll have to show us one of your explosions before you can go to a patent. Sir, then bloody well right if you blow them out. I shouldn't think he ever managed to get the idea patented. Very sad, really. You ought to be getting sixpence every time there's an atomic explosion. They cheat you out of everything these days. I tried arguing with them, but it was no good. I said, look here, my good man, if you don't register my clip, I'll get on to be very good friend, the Duke of Windsor. He'll come round and smash you around the face. <laughs> and he said, oh, really? How very interesting. Perhaps you'd like to have a look at a very new invention that's just come in. I said I would. He reached under his desk and got out a long spindly pole with a sponge on the end of it covered in horrible sticky muck. I think it was fig jam. <laughs> he said, this is a very fascinating device that we in the patent office call a nit poker. <laughs> then he banged me in the face with it and kicked me downstairs. <laughs> I don't think government officials should be allowed to behave like that. I shouldn't be surprised if he hadn't stolen my idea about the flip. <laughs>